It's good to see you again Thursday evening as we explore the different ways in which we live in this liturgical space to worship God and to honor God. Tonight we're going to talk about uh, flowers and the flower ministry. We're going to talk about why it matters in the life of our parish to have live flowers on our altar almost every Sunday. The irony is, in the season of Lent, we don't have any flowers. The altar is stripped as bare as possible, and so we're going to talk about the flower ministry during a season when we have no flower ministry. And maybe that'll even make our hearts yearn more for the extraordinary way in which flowers adorn this sacred place. We have with us to talk about flowers, to answer questions, Alice Foreman and Sandra Darling, two of our leaders in this ministry. And it is a ministry that has many dimensions. What I'm excited about doing right now is asking Sandra and Alice a couple of questions about how this ministry works in the manner by which it serves both to glorify God and to be a source of pastoral care for our congregation. Let's see what they have to say. So we have Alice and Sandra, and I'm gonna ask them a couple of questions just to let them reflect on this extraordinary ministry that they're part of. Um, I'll begin, I, I suppose, with Alice. Uh, uh, you've been here at the church for how many years? Since 2006. And have you been involved with flowers that entire time? Uh, not totally. But uh, it, as I came on and got to know the parish and so forth, and Peggy Wilton, mm. a former director of uh, Altar Guild Directress, um, got me involved in flowers. She has a national reputation in the industry and um, was a judge and so forth. And I worked with her um, in learning some of these things as well as I know you want to know how we, we learned about flowers. Yeah, and how, how, how do you do it? How do you, well, what's the artist do it? Books, uh, mentoring, going to classes. The National Cathedral sent two people here. They had big classes at St. Mark's. Um, just also, when you have beautiful flowers and you look at them, my, my background in uh, business was in food and texture and color. And, and those types of things also translate into floral. And watching um, great, great floral people such as we have, like uh, Bruce Chester of Martha Harris here, watching how they do it, how they put them together. You know, when we take things apart, we can look at what professionals do. So it's, it's an ongoing learning experience. It, is, it sounds like a combination of artistry and re-engineering, which you see other people do. <laughs> Actually, and then it's our own individual um, art. It's an artistic outlet for me. And I know Sandra, who is a fabulous artist, who has done many beautiful things for the church and in your study, mm -hmm. um, I think she would say the same thing. Sandra, how do you... Uh, if I would say the same thing, except I have nothing like the education she has in this matter. <laughs> I just do it. <laughs> I just do it. <laughs> I'm completely self-taught in this matter. So she's the professional. I'm just the... No, I'm not the professional. But this is a, this is a relationship that we have built up in, in, together in, over the years in yeah. working in this, in, in this ministry. And it's a special one. Yeah. So Sandra, how, what do you do? Like, let's say you're the one responsible for putting the bouquets together on Sunday. Take us through step by step how you go from nothing to bouquets on the altar. Well, mostly I, go, I see what's available. I go to the wholesale florist and see what they've got and try to put together. Uh, I'm, uh, my background is, a, is, a, is as a painter. And so I try to put together a color combination that I like. A tech, as Alice says, a texture and color combination. And um, then in addition, I'm able to scout the neighborhood and clip somebody's ivy or take the, <laughs> I have laurels all over, the, all over the house. So laurels are great background, chop a few of those down and uh, see if I got anything in my yard to add and if it's a good, you know, it's the growing season. And then, then you just get here and you, you start putting them together. One of the hardest things is because, that I find hardest, 
is getting them even. Because we're supposed to have, they've got two sides of the altar, so you've got to have some kind of matching. And plant life is not always cooperative. So it's sometimes tough to get arching this way and that way, trying to get a relatively even count. Okay, I've got five here, I've got five over there, that kind of thing. Wow. So, so at the, after a Sunday service, um, we have these giant bouquets, which I know we're going to see some photos of them. Uh, what do you do after the service, Alice? How do these uh, big, wonderful flower bouquets continue to find life, the life of care, uh, in this parish? Well, during this COVID period, we have extended the, tried to extend the life of these flowers these beautiful flowers for the, all the services that have been done and they've added beauty and uh, to these services. So um, spraying them with uh, and making sure they're watered to, for that continuation. But in general, when we're in um, ordinary times, not in Lent or um, Advent, we'll take them down on a Monday or a Tuesday um, and dismantle them and then making them into smaller bouquets, which we um, send out uh, driving. I drive, dri I'm, the driver. The, I'm the driver, I'm the driver. She does the driving, I just do the fun part. Of and the, the fun part is that as a team, um, Sandra has, you can imagine as an artist, has beautiful handwriting, and we'll show you later the um, beautiful note cards that she and her company uh, have printed for this purpose, and those go along with every bouquet. So you take bouquets out to people who are sick or celebrating something or have had a transition in life? That's, that's absolutely, and they can be friends of, of parishioners, they can be, um, you know, uh, family, it, and, and the biggest thing that we, we hope to get across right now is the internet ability to do internet delivery. That is, we'll take the flowers to the person in need, um, whose family, and then have them send a photograph of the bouquet to that person in need in their family or friends, and then use those flowers as a centering for prayer during the week. So if somebody wanted to be part of this wonderful, robust flower ministry, particularly putting flowers out uh, on the altar every Sunday, how would they go about getting involved? Well, you could contact anybody at the church and they would send you to the right person. The right person, as a matter of fact, is Sally Clark, who's the head of the altar guild. She schedules everything. And if, if you know what you're doing, if you're semi-professional, done it for years, you probably can jump right in. If you're not sure of yourself, if you need mentoring, we're happy to help. But we'd be delighted to have uh, people participate in that. It's a lot of fun. And we have a, if the more people we have, the less often you have to do it. So that we would be, we would be happy to welcome anybody who wants to participate in that. So it's extraordinary the manner by which flowers work in our parish. They work to glorify God up at the altar, um, and they work as a pastoral way of reaching out and reminding people how much they're loved, how much God cares about them, and that we pray for them here. Flowers are an outward, invisible sign of that. But let's go and take a look and where the magic happens. So here we are in the sacristy. This is where uh, things are arranged for Holy Communion. Through this window, you might see Sandra out in the yard. We're gonna go visit her in a little bit. But Alice and I are in here to talk about uh, where the flowers come together in this, in this space. So Alice, thank you. You have laid out in front of you a couple of your tools of the trade. Uh, what happens in here? So the flowers come in, and they maybe sit in one of these containers, then what do you do? You take the containers apart and, um, and put them in buckets usually, cut them, put them in buckets, because they may, you know, flowers, even in, Oa in the Oasis products, um, you need to keep their stems fresh. And so um, we have, fortunately, people in the congregation, and especially Sandra, does a lot of, of uh, looking for containers. And containers like this for we are great for larger flowers. If we're going to hospitals and so forth, we can use something like this is great because it makes a small arrangement 
um, as, as Sandra said, these about clipping our own uh, greens, these didn't come off campus. These came right, I took these out um, as I came over to, to the church today. So these, we'll, we'll, we'll cut these down and put them in containers uh, like this. And then we have boxes. Fortunately, Sandra again, her wonderful company, Laughing Elephant, um, in the, it, they do cards and we get boxes from that or boxes from um, the uh, wholesale house and put them in. And then, of course, as I said before, we have these beautiful cards um, and uh, that, that say these flowers are from the altar or blessed or from the gardens of Epiphany Parish. They are given with prayers for healing and strength. And if there aren't healing and strength, we have something like enjoy, or um, if it's someone who has had sympathy, and so forth. Um, then make sure, this is holy water, and we spray every, every um, bouquet, even though they've been on the altar, we spray. Because something like this came from my garden that needs all the prayers it can get. <laughs> And it, it loves it. Um, and then we also use a, a product, um, it, uh, give it a little Hawaiian spray, which helps flowers last longer. That's amazing. So uh, in the season of flowers, when we have flowers coming off the altar, how many individual bouquets, maybe on your most active week, have you taken out to parishioners? Um, we've had... We've had very active week. So all I can tell you is we do send a report to the clergy and to staff and to Robin Mandiras who heads up the, our area for um, pastoral care. I can tell you this because I went back in the records. 2017 between June and December we delivered, prepared and delivered 195 bouquets. That is great care. Alice, well done. It's a beautiful ministry. I want to encourage anybody who is, has a heart for this kind of uh, work, this artistry and, and sort of representing God's great creation as a pastoral tool, please let me know or let Alice know or let anybody on the staff know and you too can be involved in, in caring and sharing the love of God in this way. Sandra, uh, where are we? We're out the back of the church, or the side of the church anyway. This is a, a place that we was built for us to do the flowers. You can see we give credit to this, this uh, Boy Scout, Eagle Scout troop who built the, the, the table that we use. It, it's kind of a mess now. We, it's winter time and we, it's too cold to work out here. So it's just a collection of vases that have, we don't want or the, they're just built up here from when we use them. But, Often we, we do arrange here. I tend to arrange over here because the light's good, but, uh, and also you don't run into the awning when you do that. But so we just set up things. But it's a place we keep, for us to keep things and, and to work. We have, uh, keep, we, when we bring in the flowers, we usually put them out here in buckets because it's nice and cool. Even in, in the winter, it isn't that cold in Seattle. They can stay out here and they last longer until we get them made. And, um, and then uh, even in the summer, they're under this shade. So it's a good place to keep the flowers from the time we buy them until we have, get around to arranging them. And we, we set things out here for the, before they get delivered. And it's just a general work, outside workspace. Uh, I use it whenever I can because it's easier to clean up out here <laughs> than inside. And making flower, making flower arrangements is generally a little messy. <laughs> End up with stuff all over the floor and stuff. So that's what we use it for. It's, it's very handy. I, we would be in trouble if we didn't have it because the sacristy is used by many people. So it's kind of nice to have our own little place. Thank you. You're very welcome. So thank you for uh, learning a little bit about the flower ministry here at Epiphany. Right to my right is three steps away, the place you saw Sandra doing the work. And then you go right through these doors this window right here looks into the sacristy. It's a few short steps between where we compile the flowers, where we put them in vases, and where we take them up to the altar. And we go to the Mary Martha door. You've heard me talk about these windows, right? The ministry of contemplation 
and the Ministry of Action tied together. That's what this Ministry of Flower Arrangement is about as well, right? Action and activity and creativity and beauty and awe in God's creation. If it's something you're interested in or want to find out more about, let me know. And I'd love to introduce you to these most extraordinary artists and women of faith, Sandra Darling and Alice Ford.